All right, so let's uh, clean this mess up a bit. Let's start again. Let's just make a new one. So let's see. Somewhere we have a factory. That factory uses a alum 35. Just get my pen here. Uses a LM35 sensor. The LM35 goes 0 to 1 volt, where 0 volt is 0 degrees Celsius, and 1 volt equals 100 degrees Celsius. What else do we know? We know it's changing. It's changing. It goes from 0 to 40 degrees Celsius. This machine goes from 0 to 40 degrees Celsius, and we have a full cycle of change in two hertz sorry not two kilohertz let me just undo this two hertz why there's a change every two seconds so my period is two seconds two seconds for a full a full cycle would be two sorry not there a full cycle will be at two seconds. What else do we see? We see it goes from zero to 40 degrees. So what do we know it's gonna go from? Zero to zero comma four volts. Everybody understand the example that I'm dealing with? You might have some problem of your own. Remember in industry, in nature, it's always voltage. Now, if it's an airplane, this could be altitude instead of temperature. So a certain voltage will meet a certain height above sea level. If you're at a filling factory, the voltage will equal some weight, maybe 500 grams, maybe a kilogram. And all of them is full up, empty, full, empty, full, empty, fly higher, fly lower, fly higher, fly lower, go faster, go slower. So most things in electrical engineering, all sensors will give you some sort of voltage equivalent. And you just have to calibrate it to an um, understandable value. So it's normally just the user, whoever looks at your software, that you need to convert it for. Um, they don't like the voltage. They like degrees Celsius, kilometers per hour, so, uh, height above sea level, so many kilograms. So uh, we'll just have to convert it for the user and then in control you don't want noise so this is kind of what we have so how will our signal look like our signal is going to go from 0 to 0 comma 4 volts we can understand that so we're going to have maybe a, in our circuit in our software we can see there's a little needle it's going to go from 0 to 0 0.4 volts, we have to multiply this as we calculate it with 100 so that your user can see 0 to 40 degrees Celsius because the operator wants to see this, maybe the next system wants to see this. So this is the basics of it. This is what we have to look at. Let's just get a new one here. Let's save this one. I'll just save it on my desktop. Save it and downloads. Alright, so now what do we know? We know that the signal is supposed to look something like this, but there's some noise on it, it's jumping around. We can see here, uh, let me just open the software again. If you look at this needle, it's supposed to go smooth like this 0 to 40, 0 to 40, but it's jumping around. And we have to calculate why it's jumping around. And this is typical signal processing problems. You'll have to calculate or see or identify certain frequencies that is jumping around. Now, if you look at this one here, yeah, uh, this waveform we have here, you can see it's a slow waveform. I'm just going to make it two seconds. We're going to build this software in a, in a short time. Uh, going to build this soon. <laughs> So again, we're going to build this software soon, uh, the simulating, the simulator. Let's just go, yeah, I'm just going to change this back to two seconds, two hertz. I'm going to show you all of this just now, um, but I just want to explain again. So if we can see, if I run it again, 
see why it's not running. There we go. So you can see the needle is going up and down. It's going 0 to 4, 40, 0 to 40. It's a little bit quicker. And you can see I slowed it down so you can actually see the difference. The green one there, the green needle, that's the noisy one. The red one is the smooth one. Then I just plotted it here just to show you. So this is what we want to kind of see, a smooth ex uh, value of the temperatures. But what do we have? We've got a noisy cycle on there. So back to basic signal processing. Let me just stop this here. So if you look here, can you see that that is a high frequency? That looks like a high frequency on the low frequency. The amplitude is not large, but it is there. So if we can go back to the sketch, so this is what we want and then this is kind of what we get a noisy signal like that so in kind of real life what is happening there what we have there we've got a low frequency and we've got a small high frequency and if you add them together you're gonna get something that looks like this so we can actually break a frequency down. Either we can make a frequency, we can simulate a noisy signal by doing this, by adding two frequencies together. Or if we get some sort of noisy signal, we can do some mathematical stuff on it. And I'm going to explain it now, like the Fourier transform. We can explain, uh, do the Fourier transform on it. And it's going to break it up into the big, we can see that there, there is a big frequency there. And there's also a small frequency there. And sometimes there's a lot of other frequencies as well. In this case, we might just have two. But if you think about something like a heartbeat from an EEG machine, what do you see there? There's a low frequency. There's a high frequency. There's a mid-sized frequency. So that might be an addition of a lot of different frequencies. Do you understand this? This is very important that you get this, that if we have a signal in nature that looks like this we can actually break it up into its components of different frequencies if we don't if we want to simulate a signal like this we can see what it looked like and then we can start adding all different type of frequencies until we get a something very similar and this is normally to simulate your circuit your program with and once it's working we can then test it with the real system